Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Urban Legends video. Another Urban Legends of the Week here for you. Again, something from the UrbanLegendsWikia.com website that happens to involve a random page. This time though, I didn't exactly find it through the random page itself not as far as a direct link but rather when it brought me to a random page I noticed this suggestion on the right hand side never heard of this particular urban legend before but after reading the information tied to it it was definitely something that seemed very interesting I wanted to share with everyone here because it has to do with yet another one of those urban legends linked to the internet so pretty good stuff when it comes to the urban legend itself and then on a tragic note I'll showcase how it's linked to a real life situation a real tragedy that occurred a couple of years back there in Japan so first off it has to do with the urban legend known as the red room curse and basically it's like the other urban legends I might have talked about in the past where if you come across a specific location on the internet and you follow through with the instructions or in, in some cases uh, the instructions are forced upon you then the end result is that it's either your demise or you become part of the curse itself. I don't believe much of any of this at all, but I'm just going to present it for you here. So that way, at least um, from an uh, informational standpoint, you'll have the information for you. So where did the Red Room curse originate? Um, I don't know exactly the whereabouts of it. It was, once again, it's one of those things where it started somewhere in the early days of the internet. And it has to do with a particular file program. It's one of those SWF files that apparently was in GeoCities. GeoCities, of course, is one of those older internet domains I don't think it's around anymore at all um, but it was one of the earlier ones back during the days of the internet like let's say in the mid 90s maybe even stretching it to the early 2000s and the idea with this red room curse is that there in Japan somebody made an internet pop-up there in GeoCities that was basically a big red box with some words written in Japanese. You're looking at a picture of it here. And the idea is the words will display something that translate to the phrase do you like and then it's blank. And it's open term interpretation at the beginning about what you like or what it's asking. And so the way it goes further is that somehow either the actual file itself starts filling in more of that blank part or your actions like let's say you're trying to click out of the box clicking the X or trying to remove the box but the way the file works is it can't go away because once you have it there it's there on your computer at least in a viewing purpose and then eventually the letters come out within the blank space itself so that it spells something along the lines of do you like the red room and then when that happens then you're, it goes through a series of I guess other names of some sort those names don't mean anything to you at the beginning but eventually you start getting to a point where it shows names of people you might know and then I think it showcases one final set of name depending on the variation of the red room curse it's either a name of like let's say your closest friend or it's the name of yourself altogether and then that's it the curse is upon you you've inadvertently been involved with the Red Room curse, whether it was by accident or in some cases, um, based on what I was reading, some people do this on purpose, then you are involved with the curse and the notion goes that because you are part of it, now you will commit some kind of suicide and the way the suicide works is it's something where you'll have some kind of thing done either to yourself or to others where it coats the walls of your room with either your blood or someone else's blood hence the name the red room that's where the red room comes from that's what it's tied to it and so that's the urban legend itself uh, to this day it still seems like people look up um, with regards to the information to it and in fact I'll include the direct link below to a copy of 
the file itself. Um, I looked at it, it's nothing. I mean, it's I barely let it play for maybe about 30 seconds, and I thought, this is nothing. I'm just going to go ahead and switch it. Um, so it's, uh, unless you understand also um, Japanese, it's a little, you don't, you don't understand anything. Like, uh, you don't know what it's saying in some of the other pages. I imagine that there's websites that are out there that have directly translated every single thing and I did a cursory glance here on YouTube and it looks like others have made videos that show like a complete walkthrough really long videos too so if you have the time and the patience you can follow those videos and then see what it showcases but again it's one of those quirky things where all it is it's something that's made up just with enough curiosity so that people look it up themselves and that's how it perpetuates its existence nothing happens nothing is done nothing occurs to you afterward but the notion of it um, and that mysterious ting I guess ping that's tied to it that's what makes it uh, pretty much an urban legend to this day now the way it was tied to a tragic thing and this is um, it's a loose link, but still, it, it apparently is there. You have to go back just a couple of years, back to 2004. And what had happened is there in Japan, there was a murder that occurred between two young girls. One was 11 year old, years old, and the other one was 12 years old. The 11-year-old girl... Her name has been kept hidden because apparently there in Japan when someone is considered a minor and there's a brutal crime, uh, something like this has occurred, then um, the names are kept private. And so I'm not going to list the names. And in fact, uh, apparently, I don't know if it's the police department there or some other law enforcement or legal enforcement department, but they have not encouraged anyone to post photos of the people themselves, the two little girls that were involved in this murder, so I'm not going to uh, risk anything and post photos of them either. So I'm just going to showcase what are essentially the drawings that you're seeing that simulate what had occurred, but this is what happened. The 12-year-old, she does have a name and it's public. Uh, she was the one that was murdered. Her name was Satomi Mitari. And the 11 year old, she was the one that committed the murder. Um, because, again, her name has not been revealed, it's been commonly known to call her Girl A, but she also goes by another name, which is Nevada Tan. And the reason for it is because the pictures that are purported to be of that 11 year old girl, the one that was the murderer, um, someone that found the picture of her, um, showcases her in a Nevada. Uh, t-shirt of some sort like a University of Nevada I believe it was t-shirt and then that's why um, she has that moniker the Nevada tan so here's what happened on June 1st 2004 girl a again the 11 year old was with um, her friend that 12 year old Satomi in an empty classroom and for whatever bizarre reason tragic reason um, why they were there by themselves that 11 year old took out a knife and basically butchered the 12 year old to death I mean just completely massacred her killed her um, it was pretty bad um, so much so that her body um, was covered in blood and then so was girl a covered in blood um, I don't know the. I think it was involving slashing her throat, from what I read, and then also slashing her arms. And she did this all with basically just a utility knife, a small utility knife of some sort. And again, this happened right there in the school, but in an empty classroom. So how eerie is that? Imagine the, like if there was a class right next door, just having its usual activities, and then the class next to it empty but for the fact that these two girls and this thing was happening so once that was done then girl A proceeded to calmly walk back into her classroom covered in blood and of course everyone is just completely shocked um, they traced it back to the empty classroom they found that 12 year old uh, who was who was dead the 11 year old wasn't really at a point where she was discussing much but eventually she was able to say um, that she was sorry for what had happened she started to repeat it over and over um, and eventually she 
stated everything. Like she confessed to it and stated that it was her. And the way it's tied to the urban legend is this: um, that still no real reason has been found as to why the 11-year-old did this. The the closest that it's been surmised is because, and again, even with the early days of the internet here being about 2004. Um, it's apparently that even then that there was some kind of online bullying of sorts between the two girls and it was assumed or surmised that the 12 year old was slandering the 11 year old girl A on the internet by calling her quote unquote goody goody and then also making fun of her appearance so the 11 year old I guess that was it she was not having it and that's when she uh, attacked her with the utility knife later on in that empty classroom. And then where it's linked to the Red Room thing is because when police started the investigation and eventually found the computer of the 11-year-old girl A, then whenever they looked up the information on the computer, they noticed that the very first bookmark, meaning it's a very important bookmark, on the girl's computer uh, because it's the first one, so it's the one that she visits most often, was the very same Red Room Flash animation, that file, that SWF file that 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 I, that I showcase pictures of. So that's kind of eerie. Um, that's why it's it, this urban legend almost took on a life of its own with regards to staying popular in the internet just because of that one simple link. Whether, of course, it truly has to do with the murder, that's a huge stretch, but that's enough at least to make sure that this urban legend gains some notoriety. And it has ever since then. It's, it's stayed again as a pretty creepy urban legend since that point. So, so that's it. The Curse of the Red Room, or the Red Room Curse, as others say it. What do you guys think? If you have any more information that could be stated, something that I might have missed, it'd be great to hear. But again, um, it's a tragic set of news when it comes to what had happened with the girl there in Japan. By the way, um, as far as the whereabouts of girl A, apparently um, she kind of got off a little bit light. Uh, she was supposed to be sentenced for like four years, but then it was reduced to two years. And even then, because of her minor age, it was considered almost like, I don't, if I were, if, I, if the information came out correctly, um, it was where she was sent to like some kind of mental institution rather than like real prison of some sort. And she was even allowed to, um, graduate in some case like she was able to go and if I read the information correctly like get whatever their version is of primary or secondary school she was able to pass and then go to the next one because they wanted to make sure uh, those that were um, punishing her also wanted to make sure that she would be rehabilitated and then be able to um, essentially lead on a successful life afterward. I don't know where the whereabouts are now, but at least from that information, you can see where it was at that point. So, All right, everybody. Thanks again, as always. Take care.